A very warm welcome to this edition of CNBC Africa Special. I am Stephen Mouvunyi. Now, Rwanda has made its mark in terms of promoting gender equality, but you may not be quite familiar with the status of financial inclusion in the country. And the Minister of Gender and Family Planning, Solina Nyirahabimana, is going to delve into exactly that in this conversation with my colleague Arnold Quisera. Take a listen. Rwanda made very big steps in including uh, women financially. Now up, up to about 63% of women are included financially. If you could tell us and break it down for our viewers, what deliberate efforts has the government done over what period of time to make sure that there is that drastic movement, uh, which was more than 30% to see more women included financially? Thank you. Um, to cut the story short, I may start by uh, uh, the year 2012, where women were fi formally financially included at uh, 36 percent. And the year 2013 that followed, we had uh, worked on, on three products or strategies. One, we passed the law on or, uh, women's right to land. And uh, second, uh, the law on finance and property uh, of Rwanda had uh, requested that there, is, there has to be gender budgeting, where all institution that has to present its budget has to bring the annex showing how the budget that is going to be allocated to the institution is going to serve to men and women. And uh, the third product, that is a strategy that was passed uh, about women and youth access to finance, that brought also the facility, the Business Development Fund, BDF, that uh, had the wing where there is, um, uh, it can provide 50, 75% of a guarantee for the loans of women uh, underprivileged, not more than 10 million. And the, uh, the woman can find 10% and uh, the government of Rwanda through Mijeprof uh, provide 15%. All these products combined, uh, starting by the first one, the right to land actually allowed the women to have collaterals. Now we have 38% uh, of uh, uh, the loans where women have put uh, their land into collaterals. So these products uh, actually are mainstreaming gender into all sectors where women could get uh, some uh, some incentive in agriculture, in, uh, in, in, in transportation, in uh, education, and the, combined with the, the, the collaterals from uh, ha having access to land. And uh, also this facility of BDF where they can have another part of the collateral. All this brought the, 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 the f women to the uh, 2016, four years later, to have now uh, actually 63% of women who are formally included, 24% who are in the informal sector, informally included at least, and of course we have again 13% of excluded women. When we talk about those, uh, Madam Minister, uh, the ones who are not yet financially uh, included, uh, that remaining small percentage, what's the timeline and the plan that uh, the government of Rwanda is putting in place to make sure that they are financially included? Actually, in our plan of uh, 2024, in, in S1, we wanted to uh, uh, uplift these who are uh, excluded to be at least Former, informally uh, included, hoping that uh, we could, after 24, also uh, leave that level of informality. So, because working with the financial institutions, it's not only banks also working even with the circles at Umurenge level. 
So this kind of uh, bringing banks and financial institutions uh, nearer people will also help them to be financially included. Thank you. Um, now, Rwanda at uh, the Global Jira Summit uh, here in Kigali that you're hosting, mm -hmm. uh, Rwanda has committed itself to one million US dollars contribution to uh, the AFAWA program. Now, why is it important for a country like Rwanda, uh, a small country like Rwanda, to contribute this one million US dollars? Yeah, let's put things right first. <laughs> Rwanda, the, the, the greatness of Rwanda, you don't see it in the size. So it's a great country. It's a small in size, but it's a great country. In, in the leadership, in the running the business, in what we are doing, and the, the proof of it is that uh, the, the world is coming to us as partners and uh, the, the valuable pa partners, as you see. And uh, yes, Rwanda has committed uh, a million of US dollar to the AFAWA. AFAWA is the affirmative uh, of financial action for women in Africa because we the facility is going to help to bring actually in a simple way guarantee up to 75 percent for women's loans and um, and the rest will be covered by women themselves it is going to provide a, a technical assistance to women in business, but also to the banks and financial institutions to help them to make or to, to, to put in place the services, the product that are tailored to the needs of women. And uh, the third aspect that they are going to cover is the part of uh, clearing or helping policymakers and countries to create where need is be is there to create an, a conducive environment for women to do business. For instance, uh, like I was saying before, uh, the land, right to land, is something that uh, it's a traditional collateral that is there. But for instance, when we have access to this facility, covering 75%, uh, government of Rwanda, for instance, covering for giving a grant of 15%, the 10% can come from the, 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 the collateral from the land that women have access to, meaning that also this conducive environment toward women, uh, like having access to, to land, is another wing to work on with governments because we, we were having a discussion with other ministers in charge of gender and women affairs. It is not in all countries that, for instance, women have rights to land. And they are in some part of the world in Africa where there are many restrictions and discriminatory laws against women. Recently there was a, <coughs> a statistic when it came to procurement in Rwanda uh, by the Ministry of Finance and Economic Planning uh, that said up to 19% uh, women-led businesses are in the various biz uh, business, but when you break that down, it's again the chunk of businesses are smaller. Uh, you're looking at service sector, you know, uh, that's where majority of these businesses are. W w what can be done differently, and is what is the government's plan to ensure that women-led businesses are also uh, competing in other sectors like manufacturing, industry, and they're just not limited to things like crafts and food, you know, and the hotel industry. Yeah, it's a study made by the New Faces and New Voices, actually. Yeah. The New Faces, New Voices? Yes. Said, 30, said 13%. 13%. But the min Ministry of Finance and Economic Planning says 19%. 19, yes. yes. Uh, uh, the, 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 the DG of uh, mm. uh, Procurement Authority uh, yes. gave this barra, in any case, what you could see f from that study or statistic, the existing stat statistics, is that uh, women w are not included in uh, the public procurement. And um, the limitation or challenges were highlighted by the study and also by uh, uh, our National Institute for Statistics. We could see the problem 
coming from not having the, 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 the seed money to start business, not to, to, to forbidding, not having network, not having access to information, not uh, uh, having self-confidence, and also the, 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 the mindset of the, 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 the people in the bidding system uh, having perception that women will not be able to, to perform well in this market, this, uh, the, the, this bidding. And yes, there are some aspects that can be corrected through the law on the procurement. But also, there are other aspects where we need to empower them in terms of capacity building. The ICT, because some uh, have their, this process to go through and they are not equipped for that. We have the language, because as it was highly, uh, lightly said last week, it's, uh, the, the, this document, all the documents come in English and you are actually excluded from bidding if you can't uh, read it. So there are some aspects that you can address, some through the laws and the policies, others f f through our awareness, others through capacity building. So it, it requires uh, like a holistic approach to, to uplift uh, the levels of women to participate th through uh, fully in this uh, this uh, pro public procurement. Amazing. Just before we let you go, the Global Gender Summit, which you've hosted, has had a lot of takeaways. What are your takeaways from this summit? Yeah, uh, Rwanda has uh, made tremendous uh, uh, stride toward gender equality, but uh, we have to be in this platform of peer learning. The conversations, the inspiration from the heads of state, from the uh, first ladies, from eminent personalities that were there, they have brought us to think other innovative way of sustaining the gains in terms of gender equality, but also to address the challenges that we remain with in Rwanda. Minister Nyira Habimana explaining the government's efforts to improve financial inclusion. And just to make sure you're up to speed, Rwanda is among the top 10 most gender equal countries globally, according to the Global Gender Gap Index. Thanks so much for your company.